So what we've done so far is found the derivative of a function of x um, using the limit definition or the difference quotient. So what we've done so far is if we wanted to take the first derivative of a function f of x, so f prime of x, or we could also write this as d dx, that would represent the first derivative of a function f of x. That would equal taking the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that's the foundation for our derivative and calculating the derivative. Now something that happens is with certain functions there tends to be a theme with how we take the derivative and that's where we get these differentiation rules. So differentiation is like the act of taking the derivative and so with that we get all these rules coming out so that we could follow the rule instead of applying this limit definition each and every time. But just in case you were curious about like where these rules come from and where the kind of proof is for them, it all goes back to this limit definition right here. So you can find the proofs written out all over the internet. There's YouTube videos. It should be in our textbook too if you want to check those out of why does it work the way that it works. Um, that often comes from just applying that limit definition and kind of simplifying. So our first scenario is taking the derivative of a constant number, or it's like taking the derivative of just a number, so without any variable involved. And when we take the derivative of a constant, we're going to end up with zero. And this one, actually, the proof is pretty nice just in terms of if we think about the graph. So whenever we graph a constant, that's going to graph a horizontal line. And if I'm taking the derivative, I'm thinking about, okay, what's the slope of the tangent line to this function here? Absolutely anywhere. And no matter where I am on this graph, if I graph a tangent line, it's going to be a flat line. So the slope of that tangent line would be equal to zero, no matter where I am. So with that, our rule is the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. So if I wanted to find the derivative of f of x equals 8, so f prime of x, or we could write this as d dx of 8. I'm going to kind of mix that notation around today just so you get to see both of them. Um, and that would be equal to zero when we take that derivative because it's constant. Okay, next up, the power rule. So when we have x raised to an exponent of n and we want to take the derivative, that's going to be equal to taking that exponent of n times x, and then we're going to decrease the exponent by 1. So let's see this in action with these examples here. So for f of x, if I want to take the first derivative of x cubed, so what we're going to do is bring the 3 out front, multiply that with x, and then we're going to decrease that exponent by 1. So our derivative function is going to be 3x squared. So exponent goes out front, bump it down by 1. Let's say we have g of x equals the square root of x. And what will happen is, or what will help rather, is when we're working with radicals, is to change into rational exponent form. So writing the square root of x as the same thing as x to the 1 half power. That will allow us to use the power rule. So if I want to take that first derivative, that exponent of 1 half comes out front. We'll have our base of x. And that exponent of 1 half is going to decrease by 1, which is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. And just to make that all nice and simplified, we have our 1 half, that negative exponent's going to throw x into the denominator, and then it would have a positive 1 half, and we could leave it like that, or we could write it as 1 over 2 times root x, bringing it back to the radical form. Something we're going to see with these is we're going to take the derivative, we'll apply the rule, and then we're simplifying. 
and sometimes the simplifying is a lot more work than applying the derivative rule. So that's something that we have here is we have our derivative applied here, but then to have it be simplified, all of our exponents should be positive. And then with that, there's kind of two forms of do you want it in rational exponent form or radical form? I typically leave it in the rational exponent form just because it is the same thing. Sometimes I'll just return it to the form that they provide it in. It's just, it's kind of a toss up there, what I'm feeling like doing and how complicated that rational exponent is. Sometimes it is quite simpler to just leave it like that. Okay, with h of x here, we have 1 over x cubed. So we are going to want to rewrite that before we apply the power rule as x to the negative 3 power. So then we have base and exponent, and then we can take the derivative, so that exponent of negative 3 comes out front, x to the negative 3 minus 1, which is going to be a negative 3, x to the negative 4, and then to simplify it, x is going to move to the denominator, and we'll have an exponent of positive 4. A common mistake here is to move the negative 3 with it, but think of this as negative 3 times x to the negative 4. So the only thing that's moving is the value of x. That's the only thing that has the negative exponent. So that negative 3 stays put in the numerator, x moves to the denominator. That's something I'm going to emphasize in these videos too, is all these little algebra rules that we're going to need again. So I'm going to try to treat it as review as, as they come up and as we need them. Okay, so that's our power rule. That is one that's going to come up so often. Another one is our constant multiple rule. So this just tells us if we have some function of x that's being multiplied by a constant, what we could do is keep that multiplication of the constant out front and apply the derivative to just the function. So what that means is like this f of x equals 3x squared. We could think of this as f of x is equal to 3 times x squared. So when I'm taking the derivative here, what I could do is think of it as, okay, we have this 3 multiplying, but I'm focusing in terms of the derivative rules on just the applying to x squared. So what this will do is we'll have 3 times and then taking the derivative of x squared, exponent comes out front to multiply x to the 2 minus 1, which is 1. So that'll all simplify to 6x. I'm going to show lots of steps here. These will get fact faster as you use these rules more often. Um, but with these first ones, I'm just going to show lots of steps here. So. And how I'm kind of visualizing it, I know I'm kind of saying it out loud, but like with the power rule, I'm thinking of like picking up that exponent, bringing it out front, and then take one away for the new exponent. All right, if g of x is 1 half times x. Now, when we take the derivative of just x, that's going to come out to be 1. So that can be a general rule that we use as well, is that the derivative of just x is equal to 1. Um, a few ways to prove this, if we use the power rule, so if you think of that as x to the 1, it's like a 1 comes out front, x to the 1 minus 1, which is 1 times x to the 0, and anything raised to a 0 power is 1. That's a long way of doing it, um, so if you just remember, derivative of x is equal to 1. So if I'm taking the first derivative here, we have this 1 half is going to keep hanging out and multiplying, and the derivative of x is equal to 1. So this is just going to be equal to 1 half. And really with this, just for a shortcut, what I'm thinking of when I take the derivative is that we're just going to be left with a numerical value multiplying with x. I would just do that in a single step there, um, just because that x will always turn into a 1 when we take the derivative. Okie dokie, next up, sum and difference rules. If we're taking the derivative of functions that are adding or subtracting together, 
we'll take the derivative of each of those separate functions and add or subtract them together based on the rule that we're using. All right, so this is where we get to start seeing some polynomials adding together. So here, taking our first derivative, so we're going to have 17 times the derivative of x to the 10th, so 10 would drop down, x to the 10 minus 1, plus 13 multiplying on the derivative of x to the 8th, bring the 8 down, x to the 8 minus 1 for a 7, minus 1.8 times derivative of x is just a 1. I'll go ahead and write that in as multiplication with 1. And then our last one is a constant, so derivative of 1003, which just turns into a 0. And then we can go and simplify. So that would be 170x to the 9th plus 13 times 8 is 104x to the 7th minus 1.8 for our derivative function. So with these, I was just focusing on applying that power rule to each of those pieces as we simplify down along with that constant rule, but we keep the addition and subtraction between them. Okay, this one I'm going to take one step to rewrite it so that it's all in power form. So 2x to the 7th minus 5, so that's x to the 1 half in the denominator. So to move it to the numerator, I would go x to the negative 1 half. So use those negatives to move between numerator and denominator. And then from there, taking the derivative, so I'll have 2 times the derivative of x to the 7th. So with that, I'm taking 7 times x to the 7 minus 1, which is 6, minus 5 times exponent of negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus 1. And just for some quick fra fraction refresher, so minus 2 over 2, which is going to be a negative 3 halves. And then derivative of a constant, which just turns into a 0, which we don't need to write, but if you want to have it so that you're seeing that you're taking the derivative of each term, you can do the minus 0. I just end up starting to drop it. And then it's simplifying. So from here... I would go 14x to the 6th, and then we have a plus 5 halves. That x to the negative 3 halves is going to move to the denominator, so we have a positive 3 halves as our exponent. And I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm not going to change it back to radicals because that 3 halves is kind of nicer. If you wanted to change it to radical form just to show you both, or 14x to the 6th plus 5 over 2 times, and that would be a square root of x cubed. So either form. Okay, another derivative, and then an equation of a tangent line. Okay, just more practice here so you can see these. So 2 times, so derivative of x cubed, we'll have 3x, bump it down to a 2, minus 6 times exponent of 2x, bump it down by 1 to an exponent of 1, and then derivative of a constant turns into a 0. So that last term goes away. So we'll have 6x squared minus 12x. So just to kind of bring it back to what we were doing previously, and we won't completely solve this, but if we wanted to prove that this derivative was in fact true, we would be doing that f of x plus h would be 2 times x plus h cubed minus 6 times x plus h squared plus 3 minus f of x all over h. And then we would start simplifying. And as we simplified, and once we got to a spot where we could cancel out h, and then as soon as we could plug in h equals 0, we would end up 
with that 6x squared minus 12x. So it does all come from this. So that's where we had to kind of pay our dues last week of using that limit because that's where it all comes from. But that allows us to use this rule so that we can complete that work a little quicker. Okay, and just to bring it back to the idea of a tangent line. So the first derivative is the slope of our tangent line. So when we're finding the tangent line, we're looking for y equals mx plus b. And we start by finding slope by evaluating our first derivative, and we're going to look at x equals 1. So my derivative function, so derivative of x squared, so 2 times x and then 2 minus 1 is 1, minus derivative of x is just 1, so we'll have a minus 4 times 1, derivative of 6 turns into a 0. So there's our derivative function, and we're going to evaluate this at x equals 1. So we're going to plug in 1 into our function, which is a negative 2. So that tells me my slope is a negative 2. And then to find b, what I'm going to do is plug in the coordinate. And I have the coordinate 1. And then to find the y coordinate, I'm going to plug it into the original function. So f of 1 is 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 6. So 1 minus 4 is a negative 3 plus 6 is 3. And with that, we can plug in that coordinate 3 equals negative 2 times 1 plus b. Add 2 to both sides for a 5. So finding the equation of the tangent line, find the derivative function, plug in the x value you're evaluating, and that will get you your slope of the tangent line. And then use a coordinate from the original graph using that value for x. And then if you need to find the y coordinate, do that to plug in to solve for b.